Hi, we already covered a few topics about IFC export. How to map classes using mapping table and IFC export as parameter. We also learned about IFC project, site building and uh, building story properties. You should also know how to transfer common properties and user-defined properties from Revit into IFC schema. In this final lesson, let's have a look at the options within the Revit exporter. I will go to File Export IFC. During the course, we are using the inbuilt, the most common used schema, which is IFC 2x3 coordination view 2.0. We use this one because it's supported by most programs. However, if I go to modify setup, I can select this setup and I can create a new setup based on the selected setup. And this will allow me to edit the properties and settings within the steps. So I will duplicate this setup and I will call it BBC IFC export. In the general tab, I can specify the IFC version or the model view definition and the exchange requirements. I can select the file type. The file type determines the file format in which the exported file will be saved. For big projects, the compressed IFC zip format can be used, which is also supported by most IFC viewers. I can also here select a phase which I want to export. The default phase is the last phase in the project. The spatial boundary options determine how room boundaries that are required for various energy calculations and quantity and material statements are exported. Option none will ensure that these space boundaries are not exported. The first level space boundary is defined as the boundary of the space, not taking into account any change in the building element or space on the other side. The second level space boundary is defined as a boundary taking any change in building element or space on the other side into account. The coordinate base option allows me to choose between shared coordinates, survey point, project base point or internal origin. This option should be used carefully when establishing the coordination rules for the project in conjunctions with other consultants. We already covered the topic of coordinate system and various coordination points in the previous module. During this course, we will use shared coordinates options since we established shared coordinates for all our discipline models in module 8. The projected coordinate system reference can be specified additionally here in this window. The split walls columns ducks by level if this option is ticked. For example, if we have walls that are going through multiple levels, I could choose to split them at each building story where the elements are split is defined using the level above property. I mentioned about level above property in the second lesson when I discussed exporting IFC levels. Include steel elements will export steel connection elements if selected. File header information and project address allows general project information delivered with the IFC file to be customized. File header information allows us to add additional information to be specified as a part of the IFC header. Once completed and exported, it is visible in the IFC file header. Now let's jump to the additional content tab. Here we have options to export 2D plan view elements, which will export floor plans and room tags within the IFC for viewing. I can export linked files as separate IFCs. So if I have any linked files in my model, those will be exported as separate IFCs. Additionally, I can export only elements visible in the current view that is opened if this option is selected. I can also choose to export rooms areas and spaces from these 3D views. I use this option quite often when exporting. For export, I'm always using a special IFC export view, which is prepared for exporting purposes. Then I use this option. It is useful if you want to remove certain elements from the IFC, depending on how your model is set up and what information and geometry is required to be exported. For example, for architectural model, the furniture may not be required for models to be used for clash detection. So you simply hide this category in the view using visibility graphics. And when you export a new IFC, those elements will be not exported. You could also specify which categories you don't want to export in the IFC class mapping table, which we discussed in the first lesson. But I think that using this option and visibility graphics for simple categories is faster and easier. Okay, now let's jump to property set tab. 
Most of the options which are here we discussed in the previous video. The one we didn't mention is base quantities. This, this option provides base quantities as a basis for determining quantities and creating simulations. When we export a file, you can see how these are populated to IFC. Under the level of detail tab, the level of detail for some element geometry can be specified as low, extra low, medium or high. This option allows the control of the level of tessellation for some Revit elements. The main Revit elements affected by this control are elbows, floors, pipe fittings, railings, ramps and stairs. Having a greater level of detail will generally result in higher or greater file size. Remember that components should be exported with the high level of geometry detail only if needed, as it can cause data bloat. The detail level low is usually sufficient. In the advanced tab, export parts as building elements is relevant to IFC data exchange when working with partial elements in the construction of walls or floor slabs. Partial elements are exported as IFC building element part by default. This allows individual parts to be assigned to a higher level element within the IFC data model. Allow use of mixed solid model representation. If this one is checked, this will allow for mixing the B reps and extrusion geometries for an entity. Th this can result in smaller IFC files, but which are not strictly within the standard IFC model view definitions. Use active view when creating geometry. This option exports the geometry, geometry according to the view, including the scope boxes. So if you are using the scope boxes, they will be applied. It was specially developed for building equipment elements such as cable routes and built-in parts whose model geometry differs from the represented geometry. Use the family and type name for reference. If this one is checked, then the family name and the type name will be used for the reference property. If not, then just the type name will be used. Use to the room boundaries for room volume. If checked, this will use a simplified approach to the calculation of room volumes based on extrusion of 2D room boundary in plan. Include IFC site elevation in the site local placement origin. This will include a Z offset from the IFC local placement. This is important to ensure that all teams are using the correct setting for this as otherwise the IFC models may not be coordinated correctly in the Z-plane. Store the IFC global unique identifier in an element parameter after export. This will include the IFC global identifier for the specific IFC element. It will save it back to the element to which it corresponds in Revit. Export bounding box. Every geometrical element can be represented in a simplified manner using a bounding box. If this one is checked, it will export the bounding bo box representation of elements. Keep tessellated geometry as triangulation. This option will not optimize BREP to be exported as IFC polygon face set. In IFC4 reference view export, this option may speed up export time for models that have large and complex geometries. The use type name only for IFC type name. This will override the IFC object type name with the Revit type name. Use visible Revit name as the IFC entity name this will concatenate the category family and type as the IFC occurrence name and not include the Revit element ID. As you see, IFC exporter gives us a lot of various options to choose from. I encourage you to test them by your own and check how your IFC files will be affected by each setting. Okay, this was the final lesson about Revit IFC export. I hope now that you have a better understanding how IFC exporter works and you will be able to export IFC from Revit in a way that will suit your project needs. In the next lesson, we will install our Solibri and start working with it.